And Uncle Rocky is very special to me. Uh, my parents, before uh, they adopted me, uh, their first, first home in Pulaski County was in North Little Rock, right near uh, Shorter College. And growing up, I spent many a day at North Little Rock Northeast because for over 20 years, my mom taught English at North Little Rock Northeast. Uh, it was Northeast, and I guess now it's North Little Rock East Campus, but I know them, I know them as North Little Rock uh, Chargers. Uh, such fine uh, members. North Little Rock is a shining example of what can be accomplished when People believe in his leadership, and leadership in the city believes in people. When I look at Main Street now, I am just thoroughly impressed with what you all have done. Uh, just a few years ago, there were no restaurants there, there was not a theater, uh, there was no library, there was no grocery store. But <coughs> now, Wall Rock has, has grown. Just a couple years back, uh, leaders asked the city to invest in temporary sales tax to build a ballpark. And just yesterday, Dick and Stephen celebrated its sixth uh, year uh, in operation. It is the finest minor league ballpark bar number in the country. I know this chamber, many of you all sitting here, had a lot to do with that. You should be proud uh, of that. But what I'm really impressed with North Rock is how you care for the least of these. And there are a number of fine organizations who do that. But I spend a lot of time uh, with my church and my life saving church and volunteering in River City Ministries. Uh, what an outstanding organization that dedicates their time to really the least of these and helping to transform lives. And I just appreciate the what they do. Harry Truman once said, a pessimist is one who makes difficulties of his opportunities. But an op optimist is one who makes opportunities of his difficulties. And that's what North Rock has done. <coughs> North Rock has grown and become a shining example of what a city should be. I'm thinking of General Civil, you tried to adopt some of that optimism over the last several years. And I want to spend some time just speaking pretty quickly about what I see as the difficulties as well as the opportunities that we faced in the 88th General Assembly, what I think we will also face in the 89th General Assembly. They really revolve around three main things, or probably more than three I want to focus on today are Medicaid, solving the shortfall that you know about in Medicaid. Maintaining adequacy in our educational system, and of course, continue to our economic development, continue to grow jobs, uh, and support our system businesses. In this last fiscal session, which we just had our second one in history, I've not found anyone yet who voted for that, uh, but we still have. This is our second fiscal session. We got done in 19 days, and we passed a $4.7 billion budget that was balanced, uh, with just a very small uh, increase in a few programs. We had about $114 million increase in Medicaid, a $56 million increase in our K-12 uh, education, about $3 million increase in higher education, and unfortunately we had to invest a little bit more money in our prison systems. Well, in Medicaid, you've all heard that we are going to be somewhere between $250 to $400 million short uh, in Medicaid in the next several years. This is a difficult thing, but herein lies a tremendous opportunity for the state of Arkansas, and I want to say that I think our governor and our Department of Human Services are doing a good job in this area. They are trying to find real solutions and make opportunities here. Currently, 771,000 Arkans depend on Medicaid for the health care. 449,000 children receive insurance uh, through, through Medicaid. This is a really important program. We must find a real solution that will solve this problem in the long term. Our state, led by our government, and the Arkansas Health Care Payment Improvement Initiative, which includes DHS. Medicaid and private providers, they're working in working groups every day trying to find solutions uh, to this problem. One of the work groups, uh, they're divided into six work groups. One is going to deal with, for example, pregnancy. So they're going to try to change the way we pay. We're going from a, a, a fee based system to a, a system that will pay for episodes of care. One of those episodes of care is in pregnancy. Anyone who has had a child, there's a lot more to the healthcare system uh, delivering a child than just a doctor who delivers a baby. Uh, and these episodes of care, all those who are part of that delivery process, we're hoping that they will work together uh, and make sure that that family receives the prenatal care that they need to make sure that that baby's care is returned. And if they do that, then they'll receive incentives for doing so. Another area of care, one of the studies they're looking at, for example, is the common cold. Uh, so many, in one of the studies we found, 50% of the people who have a common cold receive antibiotics. The common cold is usually a viral-based infection. And antibiotics, they do nothing for uh, a viral-based uh, infection. 
through this episode of care, we have a person who's responsible for this. We're going to hope we can stop treating someone like with antibiotics where something that really won't, won't, won't be addressed by the antibiotics. So we hope that uh, through these episodes of care, this work group, we'll solve some of this problem and we'll do a better job. We hope that after this uh, implemented, we envision that our doctors will be education centers. They'll provide education uh, to, our, to their patients and they will receive incentives when they do that. So many of our people who have the common cold or sore throat, 10% of them are, are seen in the emergency room. Uh, highest cost of care possible. Uh, through this uh, initiative, we hope that we will send them to a primary care physician. Emergency rooms that do that will see economic incentives for doing so. So this is a challenge. We've got a huge shortfall to meet. While we don't think these uh, new initiatives will address the entire uh, shortfall, Arkansas has been innovative in what they're doing in this area, and I think we should be proud of what we're doing it. We've got to continue to work to make sure this critical program uh, is successful. Now, education. Education remains number one priority for us in the state of Arkansas. We're constitutionally required to do it, but it's also done because we know it's the right thing. 46% of every general revenue dollar we get in the state is spent on education. Out of the $56 million that we just uh, added to the education budget, that means 123 more dollars per child spent uh, on education in Arkansas. Our foundation-based formula, uh, the amount that we spend per child now in Arkansas is $6,267. We send success, we see success in our education uh, being recognized nationally. Uh, just several months ago, Education Week ranked Arkansas fifth uh, in the country on education policies. Uh, we want to continue that. But we also want to make sure we close the achievement gap between minority and majority students. Uh, in higher education, 18% of every dollar that we spend uh, goes to, from general revenue goes to higher education. Uh, the $3 billion increase that we had this year in higher education budget is really going to be sent to our colleges and universities to hopefully keep tuition costs down. Uh, right here in North Little Rock, 195 students are in college right now uh, receiving a lottery scholarship. And that effort to a successful bill, a successful program was led by your own uh, very high new service chair of the Oversight Committee for uh, two years, I guess, and did outstanding work, and we can thank him for those kids who were able to uh, receive that scholarship. I believe every dime we invest in education is well spent. Education remains the key to unlock the life's opportunity chest, but unfortunately some kids don't feel that way, that key in their hand. We've got to make sure that, that happens. Uh, there is a significant correlation growth and recovery. We're going to do well. Uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, the visionary leaders of North Rock, all that you do, because you're such a significant part of the success of this state. And we want to continue to emulate what you've done here. It's been very successful. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you, uh, and I look forward to joining you again in the future. Thank you.